Hello friends, welcome to Dora Soccer. My name is Delali Frank and this is News Daily where I serve you with all the major trending news in the last few hours. In today's edition, we're going to talk about Ghanaian players. I have the latest updates so far as transfer news is concerned on Ghanaian players. We talk about latest transfer updates on Mohamed Kudus, Fata Ishaku and a Ghanaian player from the Ghana Premier League who clubs like Sporting CP, Newcastle United, and then as far as El Ali and Zamalik are interested in him, we'll talk about this player who hears as usual a bit of first time hit on the subscription button so that we can build this community together. In the end, I'm going to leave shout outs and give shout outs to those that will watch this video and leave a comment in the comment section. As usual, my name is Delali Frank. Without wasting much time, let's get straight into today's news. <laughs> start off with Mohamed Kudus. At this point, if you are looking for top three young players in Europe, not only Africans, but top three young players in Europe that are excelling for their various clubs, Mohamed Kudus is one of the players that you are obviously going to talk about. And as clubs are looking for players to augment their squad as the season is coming to an end and those summer transfer windows are about to be opened, Clubs are looking for possible players. And as at this point, Mohamed Kudus is the only player in all the European top five leagues with the highest take-ons, that is highest travels. Forgets, Mohamed, forgets about Vinicius Jr., forget about Phil Foden, forget about Paul Kupama, I should say. Kudus is the only player with 100 take-ons. That's great, you know. So Kudus is basically the most talked about player one of the young players that every club wants it but there's something that i want to talk about about his transfer so remember that kudus was just a move away from moving to uh brighton and hove Albion. you remember when he was with ayas and the deal was basically going through until at the end of the day there were some few hackers uh, or like there were some few changes that resulted in the fact that the deal wasn't successful. So this is actually what was happening. So Brighton and Wolverhampton has had a contract or an agreement with uh, uh, IAS. However, the deal was between Mohamed Kudus and then Brighton. And the reason was basically, according to my sources, the reason that that deal didn't happen was a release clause. Because Kudus believed or Kudus team believed that playing for Brighton would not be the end of his career. And Brighton are a very stubborn team like getting their player or they transferring their player or selling their player on to another club is a very tough thing to do if you're a club and you want to sign brighton's player you have to go through a lot of stress but kudus team knew that there's no way kudus can spend more than two three years with brighton so they wanted a release clause which was something that brighton wasn't ready to do so when kudus joined west ham a lot of people were also questioning and asking themselves if indeed kudus has a release clause and a player if you are very good your release clause is the deal because when clubs are interested in you and they are finding it difficult to have a contract or to have an agreement with your club the best they do is to trigger a release clause and that one the club has no option than to let you go so once we all question or we're all trying to see whether indeed kudus has a release clause and then there's a report that yes indeed kudus has a release clause in his West Ham United deal. However, I understand that in as much as Kudus has a release clause, that release clause can only be triggered after two seasons. You get me? So that means he has finished one season. Next season, he'll be able to play. That's the only time that his release clause can be triggered. In as much as there are a lot of clubs who are interested in him, we've had reports that Liverpool, Manchester City, Chelsea, other clubs are interested in Mohamed Kudus because of the kind of football he has been able to play for West Ham United. Very successful career for West Ham United in his first season, boss in the English Premier League, so far as you know, football is concerned. However, report says that Kudus has a release clause, which is true, but it can be triggered in the first season. So West Ham United fans, you are safe. You can have Mohamed Kudus for a while. For Ghanaians who are worried about Mohamed Kudus not being able to be transferred on to your favorite club that you are, you are hoping that he will get to, I'm here to tell you that yes, indeed, he has a release clause. But that clause cannot be triggered until Mohamed Kudus has played two seasons. 
But for me, I believe whether release clause or no release clause or whether it can be triggered now or not, I think he shouldn't move now. You remember when he was with Western United and he was not getting playing time, I said something. That I believe the coach knows what he's doing and at the right time he'll give him playing time. That's actually what happened. They took their time, gave him the playing time. He adapted very well before they allowed him to play. And I'm saying it here again, that I believe and feel that Kudu should play at least second season for West Ham. Because if you watch him play for West Ham, it is very obvious that in as much as he's excelling, he hasn't still been able to adapt very well in the West Ham United team, or even in the English Premier League. Imagine Kudu's adapting very well in the English Premier League and moving on next season with the same squad, the same team. Imagine what he can do. At that time, his, his stakes will go up. The request from the clubs will be higher. And at that time, two clubs will be moving away from their old players and could also walk straight into any team. So for me, I would say he should stay in as much as he has been very excellent for West Ham United. And if he wants to move right now, he will get a deal. I believe he should stay and wait for next season. Let me know what you think in the comment section about Mohamed Kudus. Now let's talk about Fatah Isaku. So, yes, it is obvious that Isaku will stay in the English Premier League after helping Leicester City gain promotion back into the English Premier League. But these are some few things that we have to talk about. So, Leicester City have a transfer ban. They can't sign players because of some few things that they did. However, they are coming into the English Premier League. So, I'm sure by this time, their lawyers are doing everything possible to see how best they can get to sign Ishahaku. Worst case, just as they got Ishaku on a transfer basis or on a loan basis, I think worst case scenario, he'll be maintained unknown if they can't sign players, which is not possible because once they are in, once Leicester City has qualified into the English Premier League, they will do everything possible to augment their squad. And if they are signing any player, the first player they are going to sign should be Fatal Ishaku. On Ishaku and Leicester City, the other reports, and you know, once Ishaku gets transferred from Portugal, which is Sporting CP, to the English Premier League, there's something we call the, the solidarity fund or the training compensation. That money would also come back to, uh, apart from the transfer money that Fatah Ishaku's team in Ghana, which is Stephas United got or Stephas FC got, they're also going to get onward transfer fee and some couple of money in addition to the amount of money they've made from Ishaku. This is a big deal. This is what football is about. If you're able to invest in one player, he goes to Europe and your life changes. Stefan got some couple of dollars. I think I understand over one million dollars or one million euros from Ishaku's move to uh, Sporting and now they are yet to make it the biggest one. And such players like Fatah Ishaku, Mohamed Kudus, from Leicester City, he will move on to another club. So, Stephas United and its people are going to make some good money. I've seen a lot of people talk about Dream FC and say, yeah, Dream FC. No. Ishaku is not a Dream FC player. Before he would come and play for Dream FC, Ishaku had already been transferred to Sporting CP. He was just... The reason why he was still in Ghana was, one, he was not 18 years yet, and two, Visa. So he was going to stay home for over six months before he gets to move to Portugal. For him not to be rusty, that's how come he moved to Dream FC to get playing time. So Dream FC didn't transfer Ishaku. Dream FC didn't get anything from Ishaku's transfer deal. The only benefit they got from Ishaku was when he went to play for the Black Stars at the World Cup, where FIFA has some money that they distribute to clubs that the players have played for. Do you get me? Yes. So maybe Dream FC can get some money from training compensation, but I don't even think training compensation because by the time Ishaku moved, he was already 18 years. So Dream FC's involvement in Ishaku was just a loan deal. And I don't think they would make any money from Ishaku's transfer deal. Talking about Dream FC, let's talk about a player that Dreams will benefit hugely from his transfer deal. And that's is Abdul Aziz Isa, the young player who has scored 
four goals with two assists in the CAF Confederations Cup. Currently, he's one of the top players. He has, scored also, he has also scored close to four goals in the Ghana Premier League. Recently, in the Dream Services MTN FA Cup last game, he managed to score the only goal to qualify them to the semi-finals. That's Abdul Aziz Issa. He's a forward, left-footed forward, very brilliant footballer, helped Ghana under 20 to also win the all African games, all the African games that happened in Ghana. So uh, it was obvious that he's a player that will get a lot of attention. According to my sources, clubs from Europe and even the Gulf, which is Saudi, are interested in the young player. Dream Services officials wanted their team to get to the finals so that a lot of other deals would be joining. But unfortunately, the team didn't get to the finals. But there's nothing you can tell me that this young man is still on the radar of top players, of top football clubs. First, Sporting CP. Sporting CP wants the player because of what Ishako is giving them. When you buy a player for less than for 1 million or 1.2 million and you are selling him for 17 million euros, then it's a huge investment and a lot of money you have made. So now Sporting wants another Ghanaian to replace Ishako and see possibly they can also make some good money. Nottingham Forest are also interested in the player. Newcastle have also joined in. They are also interested in the young player and then Bayern Leverkusen. They've also seen a Ghanaian who is very good. Alonso is pretty much excited with what, Isha, what Abdulaziz Isai is doing for Dream FC, and he is also interested in the young player. I've also said, I've also heard some clubs from Netherlands who are also interested in him, and then there are clubs in Saudi Arabia who are interested in the player. I understand that Dream FC are looking for not less than $1 million for the young player. They won't take anything less than $1 million for Abdul Aziz Issa. And I believe he deserves it. Honestly, I think he deserves it. In Africa, there are clubs like El Ali and Zamalik who are also interested in the young player. But when it comes to these African clubs, they will pay you well. But when Ghanaian players go there, they really struggle. A lot of Ghanaian players have gone to these, especially these Egyptian countries, and they have really struggled. Dream Service is so precious. Boa to Esperance and we don't even know where he is now. So, for me, I think Europe will be the best. Maybe a club where he will get enough playing time. I would advise him to go to Sporting, but because uh, Ishaku's move has realized that Sporting, they don't have... You know, as much as they want talented players and they would love to develop you, they really don't have time like that. Because they nearly destroyed Ishaku for us. So, that's the thing. But I'm hoping that Dream Service and when it comes to transfer... The people at Dream Service knows what they are doing and they will get the best deal for the young man. So that's all for today. We talked about Ghanaian players. I gave you transfer updates on all the Black Stars players and all the players you need to know. We also talked about Ishaku, Mohamed Kudus, Abdulaziz Issa. Let me know what you think in the comment section about everything that we've discussed. My name is Delali Frank. On to meet again. Bye-bye for now.